Hi, and welcome to another LRCC soundbite. I wonder if you've ever had to try and prepare for something that you know is going to happen. Maybe it's not just you that has to prepare either. Maybe it's other people as well. It could be that you're trying to inspire a football team just before they go into an important match. Or there's some event you're organising and people are looking to you to tell them what you need them to do. Teachers at school, maybe they prepare us for exams, things like that. There are some people that we listen to in life and others whose advice we don't rate so highly. But today I'm thinking about a time when Jesus was trying to prepare those around him for what was to come with mixed reactions. So let's picture the scene. Jesus is preaching and teaching. He's gaining a lot of popularity and crowds come from miles around to see what he's going to do and to hear what he's got to say. Jesus is doing all of this because he's someone different. Yes, he's, he's a man, he's fully human, he's walking around, he's eating, uh, talking, doing all the things we do. But he's also God. And there's a plan that's being uh, worked through uh, while he's here. A plan from God to make it possible for humans to have the wrong things that they do forgiven and to start a new relationship directly with God. Now, Jesus knows what this plan is going to entail in order for it to to happen and it's not pleasant it involves him one day being arrested being beaten being mocked being rejected and being killed but he also knows that a few days after that he'll be resurrected back to life again so Jesus starts to tell his closest followers about this he wants them to know that things are going to get really bad but that they will very soon get much better again. As he starts telling them, one of his friends, a man called Peter, takes him off to one side and asks him to stop saying these things. They just can't possibly be true and he should he should just stop. After all, you know, wouldn't wouldn't we do that? If a friend starts saying things we think is crazy, then we would maybe just have a word. But Jesus says to Peter, he says, "No, that's not right. I have to say these things and you need to stop trying to stop me. You need to trust me." This isn't just important. This is absolutely vital to your future, to everyone else's future and to the future of the world. And it's going to happen in order that God can restore the world to the way that he always intended it to be. So Jesus carried on in his life and ministry. And sure enough, all these things he talked about came to pass. These are the events that lead up to Easter. And we'll remember that in just a few weeks time. You know, for us, Looking back on Jesus' time with his disciples, it's much easier because we know how the story played out. We know what happened. For them, though, I really don't think they would have got it. They didn't understand. And life's like that sometimes. If you're trying to explain how you need the team to play, they might not understand why. But if you know how the opponent's tactics can be beaten, then sometimes they just have to have faith that you know what you're talking about. Trust the person who knows and do as they ask. And that is what Jesus asks of us. He knows the score. He knows what's needed. His ask is to trust him. He came and died so that we could be forgiven. And that results in a change that will affect us not just for the rest of this life, but for the rest of eternity. That's the offer. Jesus says we can live forever with him if we only trust him, have faith in him. I'd love to tell you so much more. Come along and see us one Sunday afternoon outside number 44 Lindbergh Road, anytime between two and five. Or you could drop me an email because this is why we're here as a church, to share this good news that we can be saved, I guess, from ourselves. I'll be saying more about Easter and why it's so important to me and to other Christians over the next few weeks. And I pray that this Easter, you will come to see who Jesus is in a way that maybe you'd never thought of before. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Have a great week.